If you were to ask 100 different computer technicians what is the perfect backup solution, you're probably going to get about 100 different answers. Some will just say to manually back up your personal files to a flash drive or an external hard drive. Some will say to use a backup program to automate that backup. Some will say to use a hands-free cloud storage software like Microsoft OneDrive or Carbonite to automate the process. Some will say to just create a Windows image file and back that up to a portable hard drive. Some will even tell you to set up a NAS server with multiple hard drive redundancy. So which one is right? Well, they're all right because they all focus on the most important thing, which is backing up your personal files. But backing up can mean different things to different people. So that's what I want to touch on today. If you just make backup copies of your personal files, that's great, and you absolutely should, using whichever method works for you. But the real question is, when Windows crashes, or you have a hardware failure, what is the level of hassle and inconvenience that you are willing to go through to get your computer back up and running? How long will that process take, and do you even have the necessary tools in order to fix your computer when that does happen? Now, out of those 100 technicians you ask, my money says that the vast majority of them will all agree that creating some type of clone of your existing computer is probably one of the smartest, simplest, and most efficient ways to back up everything. And I agree. Drive cloning will not only save your bacon in the case of a Windows crash, but more importantly, it's a guaranteed file backup. And in the worst case scenario where you actually have a hard drive failure, you will be so glad that you actually did it. In my opinion, cloning your hard drive is probably the smartest way to go for overall peace of mind. But it does have a couple drawbacks, and I'll touch on those later in the video. I just think it's important that you have all the information that you need to know to decide if cloning your computer is the best backup solution for you. So what is drive cloning anyway? Well, to make it as simple as possible, what the process entails is exactly what it sounds like. You're just going to take the existing hard drive inside your computer, and then you're just going to make an exact copy of it. Pretty cool, huh? Now, in the event of a major computer problem, you can just grab that duplicate drive, install it into your computer, turn it on, and you're back in business. No software installation, no driver updates, you're ready to go. For that reason, it is a favorite amongst tech enthusiasts for its simplicity. Now, I can already hear you saying, well, you say it's easy, but I'm not that computer smart. But it's okay, because today I'm going to show you exactly how, step by step, to clone your hard drive. And just like with any other computer process, once you've done it a couple times, I guarantee you're gonna realize it's not that hard to do. So before we get started, there are a couple things that you're gonna need. The very first thing is you're gonna need the software that you use to actually create the cloned disk. Now for this demonstration, I'm gonna use a program called Macrium Free, which is very popular amongst tech enthusiasts. The new version of Macrium is not free, but there are older versions available that work great. I'll link those down below in the description for you. Now, the second thing you're gonna need is the actual physical drive itself, similar to the one that's already inside your computer. Now, it doesn't have to be the same exact drive or even the same type of drive, but I'll get into that a little bit later. The most important thing is that the drive that you're going to use for a target needs to be at least the same size or larger than the drive you have in your computer. Now remember, this is for strictly making a backup copy of your existing computer. So the drive doesn't have to be the fanciest, most expensive drive ever. It just needs to be large enough to make an exact duplicate of the drive you have. Stay tuned to the end and I'll make sure I answer as many questions as I can that you might have before you get started. Now what I'm gonna show you first is the actual cloning process. This is not going to change depending on whether you have a laptop or a desktop. The cloning process is the same. So we're gonna watch this first and then I'm gonna go through each individual type of possible configuration that you might have. There are all types of different configurations. There's desktops, there's laptops, there's all-in-one computers. Some of these have extra ports for additional hard drives, some do not. So once you see how the actual cloning process works, then you can skip ahead to the actual scenario that matches your configuration. I'll put clearly labeled chapter markers down below, so you can just go right to the configuration that you need that matches your setup. So with that said, let's grab some coffee and let's learn how to clone a hard drive. Cloning a hard drive is, at its core, very simple. You have a source drive and a target drive. The source drive is the drive inside your computer right now. The target drive is going to be the exact duplicate of your source drive. The only thing you absolutely need to know before you get started is which drive is the target drive. If you have a brand new hard drive straight out of the box, it's going to be unformatted. Even though you don't technically need to format the drive to clone it, I like to do that because then it assigns a drive letter, which makes it easily identifiable as the target drive. The last thing I want to do is overwrite my good drive with a blank drive. So it's always important to make sure that you have the correct drive letters when you're doing a clone. There's several free ways to partition any hard drive. In Windows, you can search the 
toolbar for disk management and then click create and format hard disk partitions. That will bring up a list of your drives and then you can simply select the unallocated drive which will be your brand new hard drive. This is gonna be the target drive. So we want to just right click on that drive, select new simple volume, click next, next again, and then choose a drive letter. I always choose drive T for target, that way it makes it easily identifiable. And on the next screen for volume label, I even write target. Click next, then finish. When you're done, you'll get a pop-up here. And as you can see, there is drive T, which is my target drive. So at this point, whether you've plugged the drive into your computer directly, or you've used an external drive reader, you now have a second drive labeled T for target. Now what we have to do is open the cloning software and begin the process. So I've already got the software installed on my computer, but if you want to follow along, all you got to do is open Google and type in Macrium free, followed by the words major geeks and hit enter. The first link that comes up here, as you can see, is to the Major Geeks website, which is a trusted website amongst tech professionals. And you'll see here you have the option to download the free version, 32-bit or 64-bit. If you're not sure if you're on 64-bit, go ahead and use the 32-bit, that's fine. Most modern machines are 64-bit. So just go ahead and click on this link right here to start the install. Once the program downloads, go ahead and open it and install it. I've got it installed here on my computer, so I'm gonna go ahead and open Reflect. Now, the most important thing here, and if you remember what I told you earlier, is you need to always know what your source drive is and what your target drive is. The source drive on all modern Windows PCs is going to be drive C. Now, I've got a lot of drives in here. You probably only have one drive, but as you can see here, disk six has the Windows C partition on it, so I know that this is my source drive. So I can just go right below here and click clone this. This screen will pop up. It says select the disk to clone to. So click that. If you remember, we labeled our blank target drive, drive letter T. So just scroll down until you see that drive and select it. And then just confirm again. I wanna take the partitions on this primary source drive, which is my regular operating system, and then I want to duplicate it to this blank drive labeled T and click next. You can click next again to skip the schedule. This is just a summary of what you want to do. Go ahead and click finish. This next box, what do you want to do now? I'm just going to uncheck the save as a backup file. That's something you would do if you frequently clone. You could just easily save this as a one-click backup. We'll get to that in another video. I'm just gonna skip this here and select run this backup now. Click OK, and then you'll get a confirmation. Are you sure you wanna do this? Check this box. All target volume data will be overwritten. Confirm to proceed. Click continue. And just like that, you're cloning. Okay, so after about five hours, 52 minutes, the one terabyte clone is done. So I'm just gonna click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and click close. Software is gonna analyze the new drives with the new partition structures. And as you can see, this is my original drive, disk six with my Windows installation on it. Here's the drive that was formerly the T drive, the target drive, with an exact copy of that drive. I'm gonna go ahead and close Macrium. And now when I look at my Windows File Explorer, here is my original drive split into two partitions. Here is the clone drive. There's the operating system and the duplicate of my second partition. So at this point, the drive has been cloned. Now all I have to do is insert it into my PC and I'm ready to go. Now that you've learned how the cloning process actually works, let's go through the different types of computer configurations you might have. The first and most popular machine type is the standard desktop computer with extra cables and connections so that you can easily add a second hard drive. With these types of systems, you just simply plug in your secondary hard drive, turn on your computer, and then you can start the cloning process. The second type of computer is going to be the standard desktop computer but has no extra cables or connections for a secondary hard drive. Usually these are smaller and thinner machines or even mini PCs. In cases like that, you're gonna to need to purchase an external drive reader that you can put the hard drive into, plug it up to your computer via USB, and now you have access to that target drive. 
These also come really in handy if you have other hard drives laying around or you just want to add extra storage to your computer. You can leave it connected and always have a secondary hard drive. So it does serve dual purposes. Now next on the list is a laptop. Most modern laptops are only going to have one drive port available, but if you have a secondary port, then you can plug in a secondary hard drive into your laptop. Now, that's great, but the problem with that is that in order to do all this, you have to disassemble your laptop, and a lot of people don't know how to do that. You can find videos on YouTube for sure, but it is a pain. And again, this is probably a much better solution because it literally just plugs in with USB and you're ready to go. But when you do clone the drive, you're still going to have to take the laptop apart to swap those drives. So it really depends on your ability to take the computer apart. Again, tons of videos on YouTube. A lot of laptops are pretty easy to get apart, but some are more complicated than others. Now, regardless of which laptop you have, if you're just creating the clone to have an emergency backup, then you don't need to disassemble it. The only time you'll need to take the laptop apart is if you have a drive failure and you need to swap those drives. Otherwise, you can just plug up the external drive reader and always create a backup copy. Now, last on the list is the all-in-one computer. Now, if you're only creating the clone so you have an emergency backup of your drive, you don't need to disassemble it. So... What I would definitely recommend is get an external drive reader and create that clone and that way you always have it handy and the only time you actually need to take the thing apart is if in fact you have a drive failure, very much like a laptop. There's really no reason to take the all-in-one apart, only if you're actually upgrading. Just like a laptop, get you one of these and you're good to go. Now as a reminder, I'll put links to all the products that I recommend down in the description for you. If you'd like a personalized recommendation based on your needs, hit me up in the comments and I'll do what I can to help you. And now it's on to my favorite part of the video, question and answer time. Question number one, are there any downsides to cloning my drive versus other backup methods? Great question, and the answer is actually yes. Now, even though cloning your drive is arguably the best way to back up, the problem is, is that when you clone your drive, you're making an exact snapshot of your computer at that moment. So, if you clone the drive and, for example, install a bunch of Windows updates or copy a bunch of photos to your computer or upgrade your operating system, your clone drive is not going to include any of that. So what you always want to do is make sure that you clone your drive before making any big system changes. That way, if there's a problem, you can always go back to that exact copy that you had. Once you've made those changes and everything's okay, then I would recommend cloning the drive again so you have an updated copy of your drive. Question number two, can I just use a USB flash drive or an external hard drive as my clone drive? Yes, you can, but here's the problem. The whole purpose of cloning your drive is so that you can easily swap one drive for the other. If you clone your drive to a portable drive or a USB flash drive, you're really not going to be able to boot or run your entire operating system off that drive. Now, is it possible? Yes. It's likely going to be slow, and it kind of defeats the whole purpose of cloning your drive. At bare minimum, you're still going to have backups of all your data, so as long as you don't plan on using that as your actual drive, if you have a drive failure, then yeah, you could absolutely do that. But what I would recommend is go with a drive that you can actually swap directly, one for one, with the drive you have inside your computer. Question number three, how long does it take to actually clone your hard drive? Well, it depends on your PC performance. You can expect it to take at least 60 minutes, upwards of several hours. In my case, in this video, mine took over five hours, but it also had a lot of data, multiple partitions, all kinds of stuff. So it really just depends. The best thing to do is to start the clone before you go to bed, and it'll be done by the time you get up in the morning. Question number four, can I clone my Linux or Mac OS? Absolutely. While this video was designed as a guide for Windows users, there are software programs out there that allow you to do the same thing for both Linux and Mac OS. You just need to look around for the programs that work for your specific operating system. Next question, how do I safely store my backup clone drive? Great question. In my case, I actually store my clone drive inside a bubble wrap container from an old hard drive I bought, and then I put that inside my safe. You wanna to try to keep it away from the elements as much as possible. The better sealed it is, the safer you're gonna be when you need that drive. Next question is how often should I clone my drive? Really, once you have a working drive clone, unless something dramatically changes on your end, as I said before, with a Windows update, or a new piece of software that you've configured, or you put a zillion photos on your computer. For the most part, if nothing's changed, then you don't need to clone weekly or even monthly. Wait until something significant happens and then create a new clone so that you'll always have the latest version of your existing computer software. Next question is, can I use different software than what you used? 
Absolutely. I actually prefer Macrium Free. It's a very simple, easy to use program, but there are dozens of other free programs out there that you can download. The only thing you really need to know is what's my source drive, what's my target drive. Everything else is easy. Next question is how do I find out if my laptop or all-in-one has extra data ports for me to connect the second drive? Well, there is always the option to disassemble, which if you are not experienced with that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. However, you can also look up the specs on your computer from the manufacturer's website, and that will generally tell you. Next question, are there better ways to back up my computer? But first we need to define better. As stated before, it depends on your needs. If you already have your existing files backed up, and you have the Windows installation software that you need to reinstall Windows, and you don't mind going through the process of starting over from scratch, also reinstalling all your programs, reconfiguring all your settings, all of that seems logical for you, then yeah, you could just continue doing backup the way you are. The advantage of a drive clone is that it does all of that for you with one piece of software and a few hours of your time. But forget about windows and system crashes for a second. What happens if your actual hard drive crashes? In that case, having a clone that you could literally pop into a computer, turn it on, and you're back in business is worth its weight in gold. Either way, if your drive crashes, you're still gonna to need to go buy a new hard drive. So ideally what you want is to have a clone and then maybe a USB backup for those files that you have put on the computer since your last clone. That way, you've already got the hard drive that you need. If in fact that happens, you can pop it in, copy the new files, reclone it, and you're back in business again. Next question is, can I take my clone drive and insert it into a new computer and use it? Well, maybe. I've tried this many times before with older systems and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. See what happens is, is as soon as you install that drive which has an existing copy of Windows on it and turn it on, that Windows is going to recognize all the new hardware in this other machine. Then it has to go out and find drivers for all those components. Now sometimes you'll run into an issue where you'll get a blue screen as soon as Windows tries to load because the drivers that are preloaded on that clone drive don't match the hardware that you're putting that drive into. That's where you can run into a problem. The good news is you can try it. It can't hurt. It's either going to boot and install drivers or it's not going to boot. So give it a shot. Next question is, do I need to take my laptop or all-in-one computer apart in order to clone the drive? I touched on this earlier in the video about depends on what you're cloning for. So if you're upgrading from a mechanical hard drive to an SSD, for example, then yes, you would need to clone the drive and then get inside the computer and swap them out. If you're just creating a clone for backup purposes, then you can just use one of these and keep that drive handy for when that happens. And then at that point, you would need to take the computer apart or pay somebody to take it apart and pop in the clone drive for you. Man, that was awesome. This stuff's better than Mr. Beast. How can I thank you? Just kidding, not a real question, but you already have if you've made it this far into the video. Your watch time really does matter. If you like the content I make, make sure you click like and subscribe and share it with somebody you think might enjoy it. If you wanna give me extra support, you can click the link down below to give me a super thanks, or you can buy something for me off my Amazon shopping list. None of that's necessary. I provide this information for you for free, and I appreciate you making it this far. In all seriousness, I hope this video was super helpful for you and gave you not only the knowledge, but the confidence to know that you can safely clone your hard drive and always have a backup at the ready in case something happens. So what are your thoughts on this whole process? I always look forward to answering comments from viewers, so make sure you leave a comment below and either let me answer a question for you, guide you in the right direction, or congratulate you on cloning your drive. And feel free to ask any questions that I didn't cover today. If you're considering upgrading your hard drive, going from mechanical to digital is absolutely the way to go. And cloning is the simplest way to do that. But how much faster is a digital drive versus a mechanical drive? I answer that question for you right here.